Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Richie G, glad to have you here. Today we're gonna to be talking about consulting because I saw a lot of you really liked the consulting video I put on about Boston Consulting Group. So I'll talk a little bit more about that and do a few videos on this. So today we're gonna to be talking about why somebody would leave consulting, right? If it's such an amazing job and so incredibly lucrative and all of that, why would you leave? So there are basically four reasons why somebody would leave or four stages where somebody would, would step out. So we're gonna talk about that today. But before we do, please smash that like button and subscribe and you get more content like this. The first reason why you might leave consulting is basically retirement, right? You've worked a long life in consulting, you've been a partner for many years, and then you're fabulously wealthy and you're out. And that's great, right? You know, partners make multiple millions of dollars a year, and why wouldn't you? That sounds great. But it's actually a long road to get there. So if you think about the, the, the stages it takes to get to be a partner at a top consulting firm, or almost all of them, you have to start out under, after undergrad doing about two to three years as an associate or the lowest level person. Then you get an MBA, which is another two years. And then you spend two years doing consulting, right? So the base consult. After that, you're promoted to project leader or something where you have a small team of consultants. And that's another two to three years. And then after that, you spend four, maybe six years as a principal or engagement manager or whatever it's called. And that's the step to partner. And then only after that do you become a partner. And a partner usually starts out with a few years of probation where they, they pay you more than you make, but uh, more than you're bringing in, but it's stressful, right? And then after those three years or so, then you become a full senior partner and you're part of the firm. So if we add that up, you know, it's like two to three years for associate, then two years for consultant, two more years as project leader, and then say four more years as a engagement manager, you're talking nearly a decade of working there just to get to junior partner. And the, the issue is that through that whole time, you're putting in 60 to 80 hours a week. You are traveling almost full time. Typically it is exhausting. There's no doubt about it. So very few people actually make it to part. So that leads us to the next reason why you might leave consulting. And that's because you get an amazing job. Some client calls you up and says, Hey, Thanks so much for working on this really difficult case. We really enjoy working with you. We'd like to make you a VP of strategy in this or a operations uh, lead or whatever it is. And they offer you, you know, really nice job. It's like a, a extended job interview. So that happens a lot with consulting that you're, you're working with a client, you like the client, the client likes you and they make an offer or they come to an understanding. Sometimes in some of the firms, there's a more formalized way of doing this, like an outturnship, I've heard it called, or something like that, where the, the consulting firm actually lends you out on a long-term basis to the company. And then the company can sort of negotiate a deal to bring you on full-time and long-term. A couple of ways to get that dream job after consulting and you know, that's great. That, uh, that, that happens a lot for me. I, I exited to go to Google. That was my target company at the point, And it was great. The third reason why you might leave consulting is that you get burnt out. As I'm saying before, it's a hard road. It is definitely hard. Uh, you know, sure you're, you're spending time in great hotels and great restaurants and stuff, but really, really you're working those 60 70 80 hours a week you are traveling non-stop you're away from family you're away from friends and you're doing work that you know frankly a lot of people wonder what you're producing as a consultant you just make powerpoint slides or excel uh, models and that's it and give advice some people really get burnt out uh, doing that for a longer period of time and it definitely takes a toll. It takes a toll on your relationships back home. It takes a toll on your, you know, physical energy and so on. So there's a 
rare type of person, I would say, that's able to sustain that long term and also sustain their relationships and, and have a, a good and meaningful life with that. It happens, of course it happens. There are many consultants that do a great job and they thrive and they love that, that lifestyle, but many people actually find like, poof, this is, this is a bit much. They exit and you know, no problem. So then the fourth reason why somebody uh, might leave consulting is they're asked to leave. So consulting is notoriously an up or out culture. And what does that mean? It means that you either get promoted at the right time and there's a window for when you can get promoted or you're out. They ask you to leave and they ask you nicely and they help you with, with outplacement and help you with finding a job and all of that. But basically you're out. So, so those, those timings that I mentioned before, you don't have a choice of staying longer. So the associate, typically it's two years, could be four or five in, in some countries I've seen and some firms, but then you're out. You're no longer gonna, you're not gonna be an associate for the rest of your career. So then you go to business school typically, and then you come back as a consultant or something in that level, and that's two years. And if you don't get promoted in those two years, whew, you're out. Then you get to project leader or something around that and you're there for two years. And it's not three, it's not four, it's two. And you basically have to master these skills very quickly and do well amongst a very competitive set or you're out. And if you master those skills, then you move on to the engagement manager or the principal. That's a new set of skills because as a consultant, you're working on trying to solve the problem and your own piece of the, the work. As a project leader, you are working on a larger piece of work, but also managing a small team. And then as, this, as a principal or engagement manager, then you're really the key contact with the client. So then you're actually moving towards building your own book of business and you are responsible for solving the entire client's problem. That's a little more flexible because they want you to actually build up commercialization at that point. They want you to be able to sell because the next step at partner, you have to sell work. That's what partners do. They go into clients and they get them to sign up for more work and they uh, get new cases. And that's a new set that you have to build of skills and, and responsibilities. You have a much bigger team, typically, you know, a number of uh, project leaders with consultants and associates and so on. If you don't make any of these levels, if you don't make the next level at the right time, you're asked to leave. There are no late bloomers in uh, consulting. So that's the fourth reason why people will leave. So if you're considering a career in consulting, maybe you're in business school right now, don't do it. Just kidding. Uh, it can be a really interesting career and an interesting number of years. Most people take it as finishing school for MBA. And I fully agree with that. A few years in consulting, you learn so much. And I'll talk about some of the skills that I've learned that have really helped me in the rest of my career. But getting to that partner, very, very, very few people get to that level uh, coming out of business school. But it's possible, it's possible, might be for you, that's cool. And we all take our own paths to success and enjoy the journey. So hope you found this uh, interesting and informative. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out a lot. Thanks so much for the 100 subscribers that, uh, that we've reached and I'm looking forward to many more. Thanks. Have a great, great, great day. Bye.